What's up, YouTube? Thanks for tuning back in the Chase Games here, and tonight I'm going to look at the three gacha units from Dragon Quest X. Uh, there are two farmable S ranks, the uh, Ramia and uh, Robin Hood, <coughs> but we will look at those in another video closer to its release. These are the gacha units. Alright, now, the female sage just came out the other day. <coughs> For reference, JP got not only a part 3 login bonus, part part 3 of DQ3, um, they also got a 10 day, 1 ticket a day login bonus for her. So they're getting 13 tickets through login bonuses um, between the two different login events, um, as well as the 10 shop tickets. Uh, so let me see. Let's put Hero Master Rank around 35 here to look at the stats. 1116, I think, is uh, average for uh, uh, an S rank. I think that's a lot of MP, 573. Uh, remember, this is without equipment. Um, Agility 466, that's very high for a caster. Wisdom 500, now this is Awakening 5. Let's, alright, let's go back to reality. Let's put her at Awakening 1, okay. Now that Awake, yeah, so that Awakening 5 Wisdom is 500. With Master Rank 35 and Heroes. Um... But 424 is, is damn good, too. 400 agility, you know, 395, uh, is very good for a caster. Um, you know, how you want to look at S-Ranks like this is up to you. Awaken 5 stats for the Sage at launch is safely whale-only territory. Because even a, you know, a free-to-play uh, player that is, in my opinion, foolish enough to chase dupes... Um, you're going for Zenlon or Erdrick. Now, I thought that she was... Oh, by the way, Leader Skill Hero Spell Potency plus 20%. Uh, not bad. Keep in mind, this will affect uh, the main abilities. Well, it'll affect Crimson Cuts on Sorrow, as well as uh, one of uh, the hero uh, Erdrick's uh, abilities. They both use Attack uh, instead of Wisdom, as, uh, and they are Spells. So keep in mind, for that ability and Sorrow's Crimson Cuts, physical attack potency will not help you. Attack increases do, um, but any physical potency does not help spell abilities that use attack. Okay. Um, so anyway, this will help Crimson Cuts and the hero's bane attack. Uh, so anyway, uh, first ability, High Speed Chant. It's increase your own agility... Increase spell power and recovery by 1.5 times for one turn. Not bad. Demon proof Bayomora. Uh, so this is uh, like a, a multi heal. Uh, greatly restores the HP of all friends within range and increases spell resistance for three turns. So, um, sorry, I meant to minimize myself a little bit here to the joy of many, I'm sure. Um, greatly restores the HP. And increases spell resistance for all turns. That is uh, range 1, 2, 3. And you can cast it on yourself. Um, so, that's good. You know, so this has the same range as uh, Angelic Charm. Um, I would imagine the initial heal will be on par. Spell resistance, honestly, it's going to... It's. I think uh, Seraphie is going to be the better healer than her by a lot. But if you're on a... You know what? I mean, spell resistance on a stage against a caster enemy, it's going to go a long way. Probably going to be better than the, um, uh, what do you call it? Like the re, I, I want to call it, uh, the, the remid heal. Um, you know, the, uh, the regen heal. Um, all right. She's got a range one to four typeless, uh, major spell damage to one enemy. Nice to have. So it's an updated Psy Cannon. She is only movement 2. I don't think she has anything that increases her movement. Um, I don't... I High speed... Sometimes there's a problem with translation. I'm pretty sure speed is agility, though. I don't think that's increasing her movement. Um, and here's the thing. You know, I had to go and check multiple sources. I looked at it in-game. This is one of the reasons uh, I made myself a JP account. I looked at her 
in the in the the meeting ticket shop, um, I I looked everywhere I could on the database. I you know I tried clicking on the ability and whatnot, and I went over to game eight to look at the female sage because look I just I don't know if you guys are doing the same trap. This is a hero unit, okay? Hero unit, hero unit S rank. This is the coup de gras, right? Ziggo Storm, whatever they're gonna call it. All right, it's look at this, the three by three range in front. It does heavy whoosh and heavy zaps uh, spell damage, uh, just uh, you know, like Zenlon, different range. Within range, guys. The sage doesn't have a death. Uh, well, they call it death bone. There's no coup de gras. It's not a coup de gras. This is not a typo. Uh, because you can you can see it on the character in game. I'm sorry, I'm not going to bother hooking the phone up for this. Uh, trust me, I looked and I used Google Translate on the image to see if I was missing something. It's also fairly obvious text um, when you look at it even in Japanese, uh, how the coup de grace works, uh, because there is a times used and what turn it is. This is not a coup de grace. Um, she doesn't have one. Um... You know, I didn't think about... So, she still can't uh, learn um, a scroll. But, yeah, she has a... Uh... Yeah, that's not a coup de grace. This is an ability that you can earn, use every turn. So, I completely counted her out uh, as an arena unit or anything like that. Uh, I still don't know if she is a good arena unit with move 2. Um, because this is not fantastic range for Arena. She does have a good agility, um, and if you are, you know, if you're not going for just a straight Blitzkrieg, that is, a uh, probably gonna be a hell of a lot of damage. Let's look at her perks. Uh, well, I mean, this is leaning more towards her being useful in Arena, per perhaps, uh, more GVG-focused, um, is, a. Uh, when your HP drops below 50%, recover half of your maximum HP and MP. That's big. And greatly increase your wisdom. Skill is wisdom translated. So that is a double wisdom uh, buff uh, for three turns. Activates only one string battle. Of course it does. Uh, when uh, So her first awakening perk, when casting, rarely unleashes a spell two times in succession. Lowers the damage... Of the second cast by 50%. Uh, just like Veronica. Alright, so the third awakening gives runaway magic chance up 5%. As well as just a general spell potency up 5%. You're still getting the 5% stats. So that's actually... Um, so yeah, runaway... Uh, you know, crit chance plus 5% and spell potency plus 5%. Not the most exciting um, Awakening, you know, it's not game breaking, but that's uh, that's a good boost in damage. And uh, the fifth awakening is actually those things combined again, plus uh, the uh, I believe it's enchanting echo. I believe I think this is just a translation thing. Um, what is? I think Yamabiko's knowledge is the enchanting echo. Uh, so I think the third and I think the uh, the third and fifth awakening both give increased chances for that. So I'm sorry, that's also on the third. So this is uh, yeah. So the enchanting echo has a 20% chance. I believe you get another five at third and fifth uh, each. Uh, and again, so yeah, that's 10% extra spell potency, 10% extra crit chance, and 10% extra enchanting echo. Uh, at Awakening 5, so not the most exciting, but they're still very strong Awakenings. Uh, it, you know, it's three small things, basically. I doubt that she is in the, the tier of uh, uh, Zenlon and Erdrick, but this is, uh, this is a pretty strong unit right here. Um, let's go on to Erdrick, okay? Uh, okay, so he's got a... Uh, I can't count this many. Six, seven, ten, eleven D abilities. Um, just, okay, so just five. Just five abilities. Only five. Um, Astron is learned in his, uh, 
skill panel. I'm not sure what they're going to call it on global. Uh, for those that aren't aware, he has it has its own menu. He's the only unit that does it so far, of course. Uh, he is going to use uh, blossom uh, materials uh, of all rarities, so twigs, lotus of silver, gold, and rainbow. I looked at it on my JP account. I believe that it takes five lotus, but it's going to be around 100,000 gold, too, that takes gold. So, just one quick thing about Erdrick, okay? How much does it cost to get an ability up to rank 9 or 10? Okay, so you got three... Uh, is this a B? So, a B rank ability to get to level 9 or 10. Because um, this uh, occasionally takes a break. I think it's stun. I'm not going to check. I'm sorry. It, so, this incre in inflicts a status condition. Uh, as well as 200% zap physical. This is not unusual. It's range 1 to 4. So, you will... You will be using this ability, okay? Just like how Sorrow uses his four range ability sometimes. This is significantly better than the one on Sorrow. So you're, there's, there's no reason not to max level this up, okay? Phoenix he Heaven. This is the one that works like a spell. Um, it doesn't say it here, but I believe this works just like Sorrow's Crimson Cuts. Different range, uh, but this is bang spell damage. Non-reflectable. Uh... So that's another A rank ability. Eternal Sword, another A rank ability. So, you know, these things are going to cost you 50 to... I think it can go as high as 80 or 90,000 gold. I, I, I don't quite recall. Um, this is a uh, 1 to 2 range. Inflicts 400%. Whoosh, physical to one enemy. High chance of lowering defense for three turns. Uh, so 60% chance of lowering defense. Power is defense fairly certain. Uh, and then this is... You're like, yeah, I know. Another A rank ability to level... No! No, this is an S rank ability. Guys, I don't even know what that costs to get to level 10. Uh, more than an A, I'm quite sure. I, I did not look in-game. Sorry. But you gotta level this up. Um, I guess you could argue that you, if you only care about Arena and you're bringing this guy to Arena... You could argue that you don't really need to, because this does take three turns. Yes, I know Arena can go past three turns, but that is not when you're looking for uh, more damage. You are cleaning up on turn three, in my opinion. Um, and then Astron, Astron just you're just going to be lowering MP, I'm pretty sure, so... Just take a Astron to level five or six, I'm sure you'll be fine. Um... So, yeah, don't forget, so rank 8 is out now. I think it costs 42,800 gold to uh, rank 8 a unit. You're going to spend a bunch of Lotus materials on this guy. 100,000 gold there, so 142,000 gold. Um, just that. And then the abilities, what's that going to cost you? Another, like, let's just say 200,000 gold. I think that's being generous. Obviously, there's RNG there. This guy is easily costing you 350,000 gold. Um, oh, so let's click the... Sorry, we'll look at his stats. Uh, we'll put hero rank at 35. For for whales and day one players, it'll probably be a little bit higher by the time he comes out. Uh, we'll just look at uh, stats for uh, a second. Now, this is Awakening 5. He gets 100 HP at Awakening 5. Remember remember that. So, I wow. His stats are just insane. Okay, so that's a very high natural agility. Um, defense is high. Uh, attack is... Is that the best attack? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, that's a buttload of HP. Now, let's get back to reality. Let's put on one. And here, you can pause if you want. That's... If you... You know. That's Awakening 3. Okay. Pause if you want to decipher that. Uh, but Awakening 1. Uh, we still have a very respectable amount of HP. 1135. 526 attack, a terrific defense, 482, great agility, 422. You're gonna need to put agility gear on this guy, and movement three. Um, all right, so we went over the most of the moves. Uh, his um, his coup de gras. I think most of you guys have heard about this. It is uh, you know unlike some of the other flashy new units, it's just one element. Although overall he has three different elements of attack. That is not to be overlooked. Um, 
yeah, they and they are all strong, even without his coup de grace, this thunder sword flash, whatever they'll call it, with its range, that is still this is stronger than a standard B rank uh, single physical strike, and it occasionally stuns. I think it's stunned. Uh, this is a, a very strong move, so don't say that you know his his that move is a, a lesser tier. It is, but it's far from irrelevant. Uh, so zap, bang, and wish damage. His coup de grace is, uh, yeah, zap. So it's 300%, okay, in an R, in an X uh, pattern, okay. But the center target gets hit, tw uh, gets hit twice. So it is going to take two hundred, uh, two 300% physical zap uh, hits. Okay, so 600 combined. And that's level zero, so, you know, you're talking 450 a hit. That's 900% physical potency. All right. Uh, that is range, uh, that is turn three and after, though. Um, okay. Uh, and then, uh, they're probably going to call this Kaklang on Global Astron. Uh, puts one ally into, um, the Kaklang's, uh, state until the next action starts, so, you know, nothing is going to be able to damage that unit. Okay. Uh, his base perk at the start of ba battle null nullifies some status ailments for three turns. Now, I probably said somewhere in a video that, oh, you can just sleep Erdrick. He's weak to sleep. That's so weak. You can just sleep Erdrick. I'm certain he will be immune to sleep. So when they say some status ailments, I'm going to guess the exceptions are boss uh, debuffs. Uh, I don't think that this is going to apply to any normal uh, debuff. I don't know about um, uh, stat modifiers. I don't know if it affects that. Um, anywho, so that's his base perk. Uh, overflowing power at the start of action on odd number turns up to the 10th. Increase attack power uh, st stamina? Smartness and agility. I'm gonna guess this is attack, defense, wisdom, and agility. The wisdom is worthless. Unless you were... No, you can't teach him a scroll. The wisdom is worthless. Because uh, this uh, this bang ability, okay, that uses uh, attack power. Um, yeah, so uh, the agility, it's just like uh, Nocturnus. That's not gonna affect him till. uh... Uh, turn two, okay? Um, because this is at the beginning of his action, not the beginning of the round. So remember that for agility boosts. Uh, Awakening three, which I... Guys, it's it's up to you, okay? He is a physical unit, so every Awakening gets him more stats. Awakening two and four get him the extra resistance. Um, but let me point out that his Awakening three is Dark Robes. They call it Protection of Rubus on him, that sounds accurate. At the start of battle, reduce damage taken by 20% for three turns. That is not nothing. But also, I don't know. I don't really... It's not a very exciting th third awakening to me. It's the kind of thing that adds up over time. Um, but honestly, I think it's kind of negligible. Um, not... I mean... I don't know. I don't really like it. This is not a unit I see needing awakenings. Yes, every Awakening will make him stronger. Uh, that third Awakening does give him physical potency uh, plus 5%, although that will not help his uh, spell. Even I, I mentioned this before for the Sage. Even though it is boosted by attack stat, physical potency, it is not a, is not a physical spell. It is, uh, sorry, physical ability. It is a spell. So that is not helping his Bane uh, spell there. Uh, anyway, yeah, everything else will be uh, boosted 5% by that. He'll He's got the 5% uh, stats on every Awakening. I don't think they've ever not had that on each Awakening for every unit. Um, but here's the, the, the fifth Awakening. You do get the physical potency 5% again. Um, but it's just max HP plus 100. Yes, that's very good. But for a unit like this, uh, I don't know. It, I'm glad that they're not making it crazy. Um, you know, whale's gonna whale. Uh, the, these anniversary units are not balanced. So, you know, you do you. But I, I, I think chasing, I think chasing dupes is whale only. I think, I think you're nuts to chase dupes. But I just don't think it's that worthwhile here. Again, you'll probably use them constantly. 
but I would just rather have more units than um, yeah. I mean, this I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's worth going for dupes. Not with how much they cost in this game, with how how big of a risk they are. Uh, and then the third unit finally is Zenlon. Okay. Uh, the leader. Oh, sorry. Erdrich's leader skill is exactly like Sorrow's. Raises attack by fifteen percent. Good. Nothing crazy. It's it's been there. Uh, so Zenlon's uh, increases dragon breath power by twenty five percent. Now I will show real quick. Uh, we should be getting this unit in three weeks on global. Uh, Meldragor, the world maker. Uh, his leader sk skill is breath potency plus twenty. Um, now don't skip over that. Breath potency. Don't add the dragon. You're thinking, yeah, okay. Dragon breath. Pro no, breath potency plus twenty percent. So that is relevant there. Zenlon is back to just only buffing dragons, but it is twenty five percent. He himself is a dragon, even though he costs 65 points. As well as Erdrick. Erdrick is a hero that costs 65. The Sage only costs 60. Sorry for going back and forth. There's a lot of, There's a lot going on. Uh, so let's look at the stats for a minute. This is a dragon. I think 40 is pretty safe. We'll probably be higher when he comes out. Um, you can pause there for zero awakening. Uh, there's five. Okay. Uh, that's a, that's quite a lot of HP. Uh, defense is, I think, above average. It's a decent agility. Okay, he's got a natural move three. There's three. You can look at that yourself. I'm going to look at Awakening one. So that's a decent amount of uh, HP. Uh, defense is average. Agility is average. You're definitely going to need a, agility gear for him. Um... <laughs> Here's the thing, though, with, I, I think that with the kind of damage this guy will do, I don't know what the modifiers look like, um, how much damage his breath abilities are going to do, but the, the range is so large. I think that you're going to want to put HP and agility on this guy. This guy is going to be... I can't comprehend how anybody says I'm blowing him out of proportion. I think you guys all know that I'm just a scrub that's going off what I read on the internet. I don't have this unit on my GAP account. Nothing on my JP account is max leveled. Okay, they're all they're all less than level 100. I'm just it's just an account so that I can look at things. Okay. Um. Anywho, just looking at his kit, I just don't see how he isn't ridiculous. But you'll find out anyway. Take what I say with a grain of salt, I guess. I don't know. People like to make fun of me and how unimportant I am. Then also think that I'm the major leading influencer for DQT. I don't... I don't know. Anyway. Um... Yeah, he's, he's just, um... Anyway, I think his damage output is going to be high enough. And the range is so crazy. Look at this. He has a large fan range attack. Okay. That's ridiculous range. And it's breath damage. Breath damage is awesome right now. There's just nothing that... Nothing significant that reduces breath damage right now. It can't be dodged. It doesn't crit, but that's really not a huge factor. Um, so stats, yeah. Anyway, what I'm getting at is I think that you're going to be just fine. You're going to want agility and or HP gear on him. Um, and I'll, I'll go over that when uh, we get to the perks. Uh, but remember that in Arena... Not only is there a 30% damage reduction, there's a 30% HP buff. So, if all stats were considered equal, uh, HP gets a 30% bonus in Arena. So, keep that in mind. Uh, he has, again, move 3, naturally. Uh, Flame that crawls on the ground, I doubt that'll be the name. It's a straight line 4, okay? Range 4 on this attack, straight line. Deals Frizz... Uh, it's probably moderate breath damage. It does cost 72 MP. Um, it's probably still moderate, though. Hard to say. Uh, deals uh, frizz breath damage to all enemies within range. Occasionally seals. Fairly certain that's hobble. Okay. Um, Alright, and then it's middle, middle ability. God bless. Not a chance that is the name. Uh, this is typeless breath damage, so I think that's fairly relevant. Range 2 to 4, so 
Um, you know, this guy's move 3, range 2 to 4, that's quite a bit of range. Uh, inflicts type neutral breath damage to one enemy 5 times, recovers half of the damage inflicted to your HP. That's pretty big, I think. Um, again, you know, I don't know what kind of damage this attack does. Maybe, maybe each hit is like 100 damage, and it's really negligible. Um, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, and then the, the big one is, uh, again, the large fan range. Breath damage, frizz. So it's a major frizz breath attack. And then, in the same action as a separate strike, large crack damage to all enemies within range. So there is a very small handful of units that resist both of these things. And guys, I'm just pulling this out of my rear here. I, like, I, I think things in, like, usually things that resist frizz, I feel like also resist sizz too. I feel like that's a good amount of units. Um, like, frizz and crack resistance together, I think it's probably going to be rare. But that is just, I, I'm not founding that on anything, that's just what I think based on nothing. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, even as a type neutral hit, for this to not kill one or two units uh, in Arena, or at least do 80-90% of their HP, these would have to be very small strikes. Uh, you know, it's major breath damage. But it's major breath damage twice. Honestly, I don't know how this isn't going to almost single-handedly wipe enemy teams. Uh... That might be a, a bit of an exaggeration, but that's a huge range. This is not a unit that can... I could be wrong here, but I don't think that you can just bait this guy. Like you do with, uh, you know, Dual Magus against Sorrow and other physical units. I I don't know, I could I could be wrong. I don't think you can bait this guy. Uh, let's, let's skip down here, though. He is weak to stun, okay? I think you're absolutely going to have to stun him. Immune to Confusion, that's actually pretty strong. People are having fun with Confusion in Arena right now. He's completely immune to that. Uh, poison, he's weak to, but that's nearly irrelevant in Arena. Um, unless you had something that could stun and envenomate. He's got half resistance to sleep. Um, so, I mean, yeah, so if, you know, there are some often sleep abilities coming out, so they would still have a one-third chance of working on him. Uh, and then he's resistant to Breathlock. Only half, so it is possible to Breathlock him, but there's nothing that Breathlocks right now. Nothing significant uh, that I can think of. Um, anyway, his base perk, uh, characteristics, I believe they call these. Um, Resonance of the Dragon. At the start of action, an odd number turns up to the tenth. So, again, odd makes me very happy. It's what matters the most in Arena. Increase the breath power and recovery dragon, uh, recovery power of dragons in a 5x5 five five range, including yourself, for three turns, four turns for yourself. I don't know that that really, that doesn't matter too much until after turn 10, I believe. Um, this is a, it's like a second leader skill, better. So, I mean, turn one, now if you're going, if you got other dragons in your party, this is going to... He's going to make other dragons in your party significantly stronger. You're going to want to make sure that he's faster, so... Limited, slightly less value with Great Dragon. Um, yeah, because this is the start of action, not the start of the round, like a later skill. So it's a little different. Don't be too confused by me calling it a second later skill. Um, first of all, uh, it increases breath power and recovery power. I don't know how that affects uh, his healing breath ability. God bless. It feels weird calling it that. That's definitely not the name. God's blessing? Um, is that going to be more than 50% HP uh, or, uh, of the damage done uh, healed in HP? It would have to, I would think. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what this is. If, if it's a probably a 15% potency boost, so just turn one. He has a... Without Awakenings... Assuming this is 15% extra breath potency, 40%, as well as any dragon that's slower than him, any dragon faster than him uh, that is moving away, is still getting 25%. Um, yeah. God, that's just... That's, that's a lot of damage. In PvE, that's gonna be... You know... It's... Uh, 
I don't know. Like, when you can let this stack, that's going to be significantly more damage. Um, breath is not the most... You know, it's it's uh, it's a little harder to... Well, here's the thing. This is breath potency. You, so you could still combine this with a young Terry, I believe. No, you, no it, young Terry does a total damage potency, right? I believe. So he's just damage potency, and this is breath potency. So you could still have the 15% that stacks up to three times uh, separately. Uh, as well as the later skill. This guy's got a lot of PvE potential, I think. Especially a giant boss battle or something. <sighs> okay. First Awakening. Three Wishes. That could be a name that sticks. At the start of battle, reduce damage by 50% three times for 99 turns. Okay. Honestly, I think this is easy to overlook, but... I mean... That's that's a lot of negation. How do you kill this guy in Arena turn one? You gotta kill this guy before he attacks. That's what I was getting at before. You can't let Aurora Breath go off at all uh, in Arena. You can't. You can't. Even if it doesn't kill something, it will at very least put it in a state where a strong breeze will knock it over. Um, and if you're bringing a Dragon Team, they're usually relatively tanky, so... I don't know, guys. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I've gone over this before. Probably, I think it's in videos. I've got, done it a lot in stream. I just don't know how this isn't ridiculously strong. Now, you could make sure when you're taking it on that your first unit is very agile and a multi-hitter. Okay. Uh, so you need to do a multi-hit first. Uh, so it's going to negate a lot of the damage, obviously, on the first three strikes. Because um, the multi-hitter is probably going to do three or four hits. So you're going to you're gonna kill most of that, with the a lot of that with the negation. Um, so the first turn is basically not going to do any damage to it. Uh, l let me spoil a little bit. The Fifth Awakening is Dragon Scale. Obviously, that's not going to apply uh, to a lot of units. This is a whale-only talent for quite a while. Uh, but, if you were to take on a Whale Zenlon, God help you. Because when you combine Dragon Scale with this, if you're trying to go with a multi-hit, that first ability may literally do nothing. Okay. Um, and then the, uh, the third awakening is at the start of battle or at the start of action. Um, I wonder if that's mistranslated. So, is it... Is it either or? If you're up at the beginning of the round? This is probably a typo. I don't know. Anyway, if your HP is 50% or higher, damage dealt to enemies increases by 20%. Uh, now, I believe that will be a separate buff. Um, it's not a breath potency perk, and I don't think it's the same kind of perk as Young Terry. I think his, his is 15%, so this is his own individual type of uh, buff. Um... So even if you dip below 50% HP, you can heal yourself and it will reactivate. So his, I mean, again, in Arena, if you don't knock this guy down, uh, if you don't kill him, if you don't take him below half and he gets an attack off, there's another 20% potency there. That's huge. Uh, and then once again, the uh, the Fifth Awakening. Uh, he's getting a 5% uh, perk on Aurora Breath at 3rd and 5 Awakening too. Don't forget that. That's nothing to overlook um i just i almost he makes me wonder if like the weeks of perfect arena scores like with a hundred people having a perfect score i wonder if they those days are over you I, this is chase game i'm not an authority i'm just going off what i think what i see with my decent amount of knowledge i don't confer with jp whale, whales and stuff like that I think you absolutely have to stun this guy. And if you are any reasonable arena player, you can't bring an ability that just says occasionally that doesn't, you know, I've, I've discussed this before. If you're going with a non-damaging ability, leveling up to 10 usually increases the effect chance of the status condition. Uh, Burning Breath will paralyze, does no damage, but when you raise it, the each level adds 1%, so occasionally goes from 40 to 50% chance, and then against a, a unit that is weak to that, like Sorrow, Burning Scroll, uh, Burning Breath is a 100% chance. 
I think that there is a stun version of that. This unit is weak to stun, not paralyze. Even though stun and paralysis seem to be exactly the same in this game. Um, anywho, you're going to have to find a non-damaging stun ability or one that goes up to 50%. Because even when they're weak to stun, if you bring a standard, you know, like uh, Erdrick, okay? This is going to do zap damage and has a 40% chance of stunning. Well, when they're weak to stun, it's 80%, but 80% is not enough, okay? Um, let's say let's say this ability does, like, 600 damage, okay? Like, this is your opening attack. He's, there's a good chance to hear it. But this is a decent attack, okay? Let's say this does, like, 600 damage on the opening uh, attack. And I think Zenlon's weak to zap. Yeah. Um, all right, so you're going to reduce that by... Um, by half, so it's it's more like 300 damage, and then he's got Dragon Scale, which is going to clear uh, heal 10% of his maximum HP afterwards. In Arena, this guy is at at least 1500 HP because there's a 30% boost, ignoring Awakenings and or equipment. So we'd say 1500 HP. Uh, so he's going to heal 150. So your 600 damage, okay, that you were going to do to him. Is actually 150 okay and it's got an 80% chance to stun him that's not bad you know in PvE that's good you can count on that you can roll with it whatever you, you just like if it doesn't land you restart in arena in GVG an 80% chance doesn't sound that good okay you don't want to rely on an 80% chance too often in arena because this isn't like evasion where it's like well you'll still survive that hit probably uh, you know, because I take chances with Elena constantly. Um, I don't think that you can chance taking an Aurora Breath. I think it will guaranteed kill one or two party members. I would love to be proven wrong, though. Um, but that's it. Um, I didn't plan on this video taking so long. It's a, I think it's a fairly in-depth look at the Sage, Erdrick, and Zenlon. And you know what? Erdrick or Zenlon, it's up to you. I just told you guys a couple weeks ago... You know, that single banners are for whales outside of anniversary units. I don't... I think anybody that tells you that Erdrick is undeniably better than Zenlon and that I'm overreacting about Zenlon, unless I'm missing something huge, I think they're talking out of their ass because it is popular to hate on chase games. I'm sorry to sound conceited here. Um, I... These are... These guys both have the caliber of the anniversary unit. I don't know which one you guys choose uh, for, uh, from. Um, you know, a, a very simple analysis uh, that I can kind of uh, agree on. This is more of a guess than anything than based... This is not based on experience. Um, is that Zenlon is probably the better arena unit and Erdrick is the better PvE unit. And that's how I see it to just at initial glance. They will both be great in either content, but if you care more about Arena, I think you have to go Zenlon. Um, if you have to choose one, if you have, if you want, if you don't really care about Arena as much, you go with Erdrick. Um, the reality is, is that you really, really want both. So if you are an occasional or light spender, you're gonna want to do the paid ones only on both. Um, these guys could only be six to seven weeks away. So start saving your talent points. Sorry. Tact points. Save your tact points. Save your gold for Erdrick, too. He's going to cost you an ass load of gold. Uh, okay, so save your tact points. Okay. Um, in, in, like, in real, if you consider, like, spending in this game... I know, it's to it's gambling, it's, it's toxic. If you don't spend on this game, good, keep it up. If you're an occasional spender... Uh, put a little, put a little, you know, put some paid gems, put some, uh, put some RL money aside for the anniversary. Sir, this is, this is not going to be the anniversary. We're going to get these guys on schedule, I think. There's, I don't think they're going to wait until our actual two-year date for this. We're going to get these guys in two to three months. Um, so put, put away enough for uh, a gem pack, you know, 6,000 paid gems. Do what you can to get both. And this is fairly obvious. Guys, if you are... If you right now have 
150 rainbow uh, Mandini medals or you're close, do not spend them on the that good unit that you missed. The DQ-10 units, okay, some of them are strong. I pointed out Mel Meldragora, he's strong, sure. Uh, and Lucia, great. They're not even close to Zenlon and Erdrick, though. For the love of God, save your rainbow, uh, you know, your S-party meeting ticket, okay? Um, you know, save your tax points, uh, save your gems, save your paid gems. Cross your fingers that you get them on the paid or your tax points or the shop tickets. And then as soon as you get one through whatever method, um, buy the other one with your uh, rainbow meeting ticket, if that is an option. Guys, if you're even over, if you're over 125 rainbow Mindini uh, medals, I would, I would, I would just wait until you get it and then buy the other one. It depends on how much self-control you have. Um, and I mean, the amount of times it takes to, to get 10, 15, 20, 25 S ranks differs. I, they're probably not going to give us golden week. So <laughs> golden week would be a lot of. S ranks uh, slash Mindini medals to add. Uh, you're going to have to figure that out yourselves. And we'll be back. We'll be talking about these guys more when the event is here. So, um, sorry for another long one, guys. Hopefully, you guys got something out of it. I'll be back with more soon. Have a good night, guys.